Welcome back to Repeat News, the news you could have used four or five days ago. <laughs> All right, I'm kidding. Maybe three. In today's top story, my favorite topic, YouTube. Let's go ahead and see what our corporate overlords are up to on Mount Olympus. YouTube has been in the news this week, and boy, oh boy, is it been a doozy of a week for them. First, YouTube gets fined $170 million for violating a little law called COPPA, the Children's Online Privacy Protection Act. In fact, YouTube wins the largest fine ever issued by the FTC. Give them a big green diamond for that one. In an article posted on September 4th on FTC.gov, they stated, Google LLC and its subsidiary, YouTube LLC, will pay a record $170 million to settle allegations by the FTC and the New York Attorney General that YouTube video sharing service illegally collected personal information from children without their parents' consent. Think about that for a moment. What else are they doing without anybody really knowing? The article goes on to explain that YouTube earned millions of dollars by using the identifiers, commonly known as cookies, to deliver targeted ad to the viewers of the channels, according to the complaint. <laughs> Are you kidding? Does anybody else see the irony here? Google, using cookies to spy on children. It's crazy, but it's true. Additionally, in response to this fine, Google and YouTube came to an agreement with the FTC and announced massive changes on children's content, all related on YouTube. So here's just some of those little itsy bitsy things and details announced. You will be required to tell us if your content is made for kids. In addition, we're going to use machine language to help us identify videos that clearly target young audiences. At a high level content that is made for kids has an emphasis on the following. Children or children's characters, popular children's programming or animated characters, play acting or stories using children's toys. But ultimately, they say, you know your audience best and we're going to rely on you to designate, right, your videos as made for kids. If a creator attempts to avoid categorizing their content correctly, there may be consequences on the YouTube platform for that creator. Okay, this is gobbledygook speak for, in other words, if you don't tell us what we want to hear, your history. I think one of the biggest concerns here is the video game content related creator. Machine language piece is also known as algorithm. And I predict we're gonna see a huge spike in complaints from content creators claiming that the algorithm, also known as Skynet, is misinterpreting their content. It's not like we haven't seen that before, right? I mean, it's been what, years now? Okay, days maybe? Let's not rush too far ahead because one of the biggest platforms and most profitable channels could be the next victim of regulatory action, which leads us to the next big story. Truthinadvertising.org, AKA known as Tina, a nonprofit watchdog organization filed a complaint against the channel Ryan Toys Reviews. In their article about the complaint, Tina states, on a daily basis, a family-run YouTube channel that reviews and features toys for kids by a kid is deceiving young children who, in their early stages of development, cannot tell the difference between advertising and organic content. The article goes on to explain that Tina filed a deceptive advertising complaint against Ryan Toys Review with the FTC urging the agency to review the marketing on YouTube's channel and take appropriate enforcement action. Now, what does that mean? All right, Tina's allegation is, look, while mom and dad are the ones who end up buying the products from Ryan Toys Review that they promote in its native ads, they're not in the intended audience of the YouTube channel. And according to the FTC law, these are the people that advertisers need to worry about. Thus, the company's native advertising violates the FTC law. 
What? This FTC complaint is one of the first of its kind directly targeting a content creator's channel. Marry this with a clip from the recent FTC conference. And we also think that YouTube has strong incentives to police its platform, both to avoid future enforcement actions by the FTC, but also because it's offering this platform to content creators. And if the FTC is bringing independent piecemeal actions against content creators uh, for violating COPPA, that may, that may discourage content creators from posting content on YouTube. Um, so the analogy that I think of, imperfect, is um, the expression about shooting fish in a barrel. And YouTube is the barrel, and the content creators are the fish. And so it's a place where, these, where this content is centralized, and essentially it's easy for us to find. There you have it, folks. The FTC is implying that the content creator could face further action and fines from the FTC. I mean, this is some pretty scary stuff. It's like spook stuff. Look, if I had a bunch of advertisers paying me to sneak in some product placement or, or sponsors, I mean, come on. Who needs sponsors anyway? The next story, <laughs> it's a wet one. Love them or hate them, the Ace family made a splash this week when Father Ace, Austin McBroom, decided to drive his jet ski in his new home's new pool. All happened when the Ace family uploaded their house tour video for their $10 million house. It's like a scene from Lifestyles of the Rich and Famous. All right, guys, so this tree trunk over here is hundreds and hundreds of years old. Um, we don't really know what to do with it yet. Wow, the acoustics in that place are horrible. Anyway, not that clip. Roll the other one. Uh-oh. Austin! Here's Austin making waves, and if you listen closely, you can hear the neighbors screaming, stop! Apparently this act caused the water from the pool to overflow, create a mudslide that went and destroyed the downslope of the guy's not only lawn, but his vineyard. Now, angry mob of the internet got involved after the neighbor's nephew posted this Twitter message on his account. Here's what he wrote. <laughs> Can the next dummy bag of the day be the YouTuber, the Ace Family, for riding a jet ski in their pool and creating mudslides that destroyed my uncle's property and grapes? They've done it multiple times. We've told the city about it, and they continue to do so. In my response to what is happening, here is what Catherine tweets, or the wife. It's nothing. It's people that hate to see happy people minding their own business, living their life, and staying in their own lane. I'm just smiling at them. Now, People are calling her out. And here's just a few reactions to her tweet. How entitled do you have to be to ruin somebody's property and not give a flip and continue to do it? Well, Catherine is flipping delusional and they were canceled a long time ago, weren't they? Next. After all the backlash, it appears that the families will be working it out based on the nephew's tweets. Ace family, a uh, little thought to consider here. Bad PR, it's bad. Let's turn this around to be good. Buy your neighbor a new vineyard. Buy him a new pool. Buy him some jet skis of his own. He probably is jealous. But this is the internet, and we all know uh, it's not likely to go away, and we're going to see some memes on this, right? So make it right. Area 51. Storm Area 51 is rapidly approaching. The event now has over 2 million people RSVP'd and officials are right to get worried. Several articles have recently come out. There's one in the Atlantic. NPR addressed these concerns and the local townspeople and government officials are really getting impacted that a large number of people are flooding the area. It's like a town of less than 50,000 trying to accommodate half a million million people. Now the article from The Atlantic discusses several points. Traffic's gonna come to a standstill. Businesses are gonna run out of water. Cell service is gonna crash due to the high volume. And there's no nearby hospital to treat people who are inevitably gonna need some medical attention, not to mention hotels and 
How about the cleanliness factor? One official said it's Fry Fest 2.0. So look, if you plan on going, just do the world a favor. Be a Boy Scout, Girl Scout, and come prepare. Bring plenty of water and make sure you're medically sound to go. And for the love of God, please, don't make that place start looking like San Francisco. Please bury your own feces and bring your garbage home with you, okay? Take that garbage out of here. By the way, are you going? If so, let me know in the comments below, family. Thanks. <laughs> Gamer desk disintegrates. I love this one. Next up, here's what not to buy for your desk. Bro, my desk just cracked. What do you mean? My whole entire desk just cracked. What the f Holy yeah, shit, stream. bro. Holy shit, bro. <laughs> Sore Malak getting a glass desk probably wasn't his best decision, right? This is great, dude. It's hysterical. And what I love was he was more worried about finishing the game than he was about the desk. Now that's a true gamer. Ladies and gentlemen, can I get a couple of GG's in the comments below for this true gamer moment? <laughs> Putting the trash in the ocean? Hampton Brandon, well, he just can't seem to stay out of trouble. I mean, did you guys know this guy? I didn't know a thing about him. Turns out he's got a string of arrests during his live broadcast over the last couple of years. In fact, on September 3rd, the streamer was doing a in real life broadcast during the night when he and his friend decided to well get some mischief going and that landed him in hot water and it wasn't the first time he had met some of locals finest now you can't pick this up you're weak the streamer's friend replied his friend then counted down from three as the youtuber lifted up the trash can on the guardrail before pushing it into the ocean. And as soon as the trash hit the water, the streamer took off running down the pier, leaving his friend holding the camera, who realized that a police vehicle was pulling up. Oh my gosh, there's a cop right there. Oh my gosh. Now this isn't the first time the YouTuber has been arrested either. In fact, on June 12, 2018, he was arrested during a stream for assault and drinking in public. Then, only a month later on July 6th, he was arrested again by a bounty hunter on stream after having six outstanding warrants in the state of Arizona. May I quote that great philosopher, Forrest Gump, who once said, stupid is, stupid does. Dude, just a thought here. Uh, we're all getting, uh, all about getting a great content going, but the same age. Change your channel direction, but uh, you know, what do you guys think? Tell me, you be the judge, and don't tell me you sub to that guy, please. Tifu violation. The end of Tifu? What? Popular Twitch streamer Turner Tifu Tenny seemingly used a racial slur while streaming Minecraft earlier this week. Twitch has yet to take action, but if it does, going to be Tifu's third violation of Twitch's policies, which is grounds for being permanently banned from the service. Look, Twitch lays out a three-strike policy, and after two violations, the next violation, and I quote, will result in an indefinite suspension. If Tifu's account is suspended over this incident, well, it should spell the end of his time on the Twitch platform. Ninja, make a little more room over there. Tifu is definitely one of the most popular streamers on Twitch following Ninja's, Ninja's move to Mixer, but the rules, well, they should apply. They should apply to everybody, but we'll see what Twitch does. Lose their next biggest streamer or look the other way? What do you think Twitch should do? Go ahead and tell me down in the comments below. All right, stop what you're doing. Dolan Dark's Twitter account suspended. All right, if you didn't know it, Dolan's account was suspended. Then his 1.2 million followers and gamers like Grande stepped up and requested that Twitter reconsider. And sure enough, a zillion tweets later, he was unsuspended. And why did it happen? Well, it appears that this large platform has no sense of humor. It's confirmed. His eight-year-old account stated in the bio that he was a 12-year-old music critic. 
get a Twitter? This 12 year old who started his account when he was what? Four, eight years ago? Now, notwithstanding the 12 year old status, but look, it's a reference to something PewDiePie did. It's hysterical. But this hits me hard since I've had a run in with a platform which shall not be named for not having any sense of humor. Ban Twitter and other companies. Look, here's what you guys need to do, and I'm dead serious now for five seconds. Create an executive position for a CHO, a CHO. Yes, a CHO, a chief hysterical officer. Get a senior executive who has a sense of humor, who has a clue. So when people do hysterical things, you don't ban them for funny. That's my thought, but why don't you guys tell me yours? You be the judge, write it in the comments. Okay, last story, PewDiePie gets the first ever Ruby Diamond. Wow, this is so well-deserved. It's such a win for the whole community who've supported him. We're going to end on a positive note here. Great story, PewDiePie has officially been told that YouTube will honor him with the first ever award. Red Diamond. Oh my gosh, dudes! Well done, my friend. This has been the best year of his life. Think about it, getting married, historic views on his channel, 100 million subscribers, and now YouTube officially shouts out and says, oh, dude, we got something for you. Now I'm predicting now, he's gonna be in YouTube Rewind next year, but should he accept the invite to be in YouTube when they come knocking on his door? You be the judge and tell me what you think. Now. Guys, thanks so much for watching this. It means so much to me and my family. And don't forget, you can also catch me streaming on Twitch. Join my Discord and be part of our community. I love you guys. Next, I just want to say join our Reddit and start submitting your new stories. And maybe we've missed some important ones that you want us to share. And of course, join our Instagram and share our story as well. And last but not least, if you're going to TwitchCon, let me know. And I'll post a meet and greet with the SMP Live guys. Thanks and remember to watch and repeat the video many, many, many times here at Repeat News. Thanks.